After talking to Serena, Mark received a phone call from Haley who convinced him to have dinner with her. Okay, Marky, then I will book a table. Let's have dinner at your favorite Chinese restaurant, she said joyfully. Up to you, Mark grumbled. He felt it was no longer important to eat at any particular place. After a few hours, he drove to pick up Haley. Haley knew that the previous incident had made Mark furious. She had been especially obedient these few days and did not disturb Mark at all. The moment they met, she lunged at Mark. Marky, I missed you so much. She whined. Let's go eat, Mark said, pulling her out of his arms. Haley was much more restrained when she got into Mark's car again. How is Serena's injury? I did not do that to her on purpose, she insisted. I don't want that to happen again. After resting for a few days, she is much better. Today she will move back home. She will only come when necessary. Don't disturb her in the future, he said sternly. Marky, I know. I will not do that kind of thing again. But you must promise me that you will never fall in love with Serena, Haley murmured. Don't you know who I like? Mark chuckled. He subconsciously did not want to make such an oath. Meanwhile, after work, Serena went to meet Robert, who waved at her from afar. Serena, over here. There was traffic. Sorry, I'm late, she said as she sat at the long communal table. It's okay. Did you come by bus? Robert looked at her head. There were beads of sweat on her forehead. He was afraid that Mark would drive her here. Yeah, I wanted to take a taxi, but I couldn't get one, so I took the bus, Serena replied, and Robert's brows relaxed. Haley and Mark came into the restaurant together. Mark saw Serena from afar. Isn't that Serena? Let's go and greet her. Haley looked at Serena and Robert in surprise. As long as she did not get along with Mark, she also found Serena a lot more pleasing to the eye. Could it be that she had misunderstood Serena and she already had a boyfriend? Mark saw that it was that man again. He frowned and said, No need. The waiter led him and Haley to their table. There was a partition between him and Serena's table. Mark directly sat on the same side as Serena. Could it be that he subconsciously wanted to know what Serena and that man were talking about? Haley did not notice Mark's behavior. Seeing Serena having such a handsome boyfriend, her mood had become much better. She had made a big mistake earlier and almost pushed Mark away. Serena did not know about Mark's arrival at all. The dishes that Robert ordered were served at her table. Robert, why did you order so much? We can't finish it, she said. It's okay. Just pick what you like to eat. Robert looked at her gently. Robert now was completely different from when he was in school. Serena thought he was thanking her for saving his life. She did not think much of him treating her to dinner. Then I will not be polite. Since you are not famous yet, I will ask you to treat me to a meal. If you become famous in the future, we will not even have the chance to meet. Serena gracefully ate a few bites. Robert looked at the woman whose every move was filled with endless elegance. She had the pride of a noble's daughter, but she was not as delicate. Serena, I have something to say to you. His voice suddenly became gentle. He even changed the tone he used to address Serena. Tell me. Serena suddenly felt uneasy. At the entrance of the restaurant, Leo came in with a frowning face. Hilda, who was dressed seductively, followed beside him. Mr. Leo, slow down and wait for me, she protested. Hilda had saved his life a few years ago. If today was not Hilda's birthday, why would Leo come out to accompany her? These years Hilda had been expressing her goodwill to him. He knew about this matter, but he did not like her. Other than brotherly love, he didn't have any other feelings for her. He wanted to hurry up and eat with her and leave, but as soon as he entered the hall, he saw the person that he wanted to see the most. He saw Serena but did not see Mark and Haley. When his gaze fell on Robert, his eyes suddenly turned cold, and he could not help but walk towards Serena. Mr. Leo, the room we booked is inside. Where are you going? Hilda called out after him. Sit there. He pointed to the seat next to Serena. Okay, as long as Mr. Leo likes it. Hilda had not realized that Serena was the woman from that night. Robert looked at the woman in front of him with deep affection. Serena, I have buried something in my heart for a long time. I must tell you today. What is it? She questioned. I like you. Will you be my girlfriend? 
he asked directly. Robert liked her? Serena did not feel shy at the moment. Instead, she was a little flustered. I know you have always liked me. You were going to confess to me on my birthday last year. I rejected others just to wait for you. But later on, I saw you burn the paper flowers that you folded for me. I thought it was wishful thinking on my part. I never confessed my feelings to you. It was only that night when you came out to block the bottle coming to hit me without hesitation that I found out that you cared for me. I will give you a great future, Serena. Be mine. Hearing this, Mark's grip on the fork in his hands tightened. He did not expect that the injury on Serena's head was for this man. He held his breath and listened to Serena's answer. Haley placed some food on his plate and said, Marky, try it. Shut up, he growled furiously. How could Haley interrupt at such a crucial time? Marky! Haley looked at him with grievance and did not dare to say another word when she saw Mark giving her a death glare. Leo just happened to hear this when he came over. If it was in the past, Serena would be so happy. The person she liked also liked her. Wasn't this the same as winning the lottery? However, her heart was a mess at the moment, and she subconsciously wanted to refuse. She looked up and saw Leo walking towards her. It was such a coincidence that she met him again. That pair of cold eyes were dark, and his body emitted a coldness that could be felt from thousands of miles away. Uncle Leo, she said softly. Leo stopped and sat beside her on the long table. Hilda was confused. Mr. Leo, what are you doing? Robert looked at him with furrowed brows. I met someone I know. I'm eating at this table. Do you mind? Leo had already sat down, so how could Robert say he did mind? Robert also recognized him as the person who carried Serena away that day. When he heard Serena call him Uncle Leo, he would not think about refusing. Of course I don't mind, Robert said, flustered. Hello, Mr. Jenner. We meet again. I still need to thank you for saving her last time, Robert said. The corner of Leo's mouth curled into a playful smile. Mr. Jenner, you are Serena's uncle, right? Isn't your last name Jenner? he asked. So Serena didn't tell you about my relationship with her. How can my surname be Jenner? Your relationship? Robert asked, not missing the smile on Leo's face. That smile seemed to prove that he had some secret relationship with Serena. Robert looked at Serena. Serena, your relationship with this man is? He trailed off, waiting for her to fill in the blank. Serena's chest tightened. She did not know what Leo meant by that. No matter what kind of relationship it was, she was too embarrassed to say it on such an occasion. Mark was using her just to make things easier for his family. He did not want her to go around claiming that she was his wife. Serena licked her lips. She did not know how to answer for a moment. Mark, who heard it clearly from next door, hoped that Serena would tell Robert about their relationship. Even Hilda looked at Serena with hostility. Mr. Leo, what is her relationship with you? she questioned. What is going on? Robert asked, thinking about that night. When this person saw Serena was injured, the kind of terrifying cold aura made him feel very terrified when he thought about it now. He carried Serena and walked away, but he had broken the hands and feet of those who hurt Serena. Even if he did not know what kind of background this person had, Robert knew that he was not a simple person. We are, Serena stuttered. She looked at Hilda, who was wearing a black lace dress. When she first met Leo, he had said that he liked black. They were together at the bar, and today they were together again. She felt a little uncomfortable, and almost blurted out that she was Leo's woman. Just as she was about to blurt out the answer, Leo said casually, I am her uncle Leo. What other relationship can I have with her? Are you guys dating? He asked. His casual tone made those who had been nervous let out a sigh of relief. That's right. It was just a familial relationship. What else could it be? Robert replied casually, We are dating. To be exact, I am wooing Serena. Under the table, Leo tightly held Serena's hand. On the surface, he looked calm, but in fact, his heart had already been stirred up. Is that so? He looked at Serena as if he was an elder talking to a child. Only Serena could see the anger hidden in his eyes. She felt that if she said yes now, Leo would break her hand.
Leo's previous indifference made Serena think that he treated her like a toy. If he got bored, he would throw her away. The pain she felt when he gripped her hand now proved how angry he was. Meanwhile, Robert and Mark were waiting for Serena's answer. Serena looked away from Leo and said, Robert, I'm sorry, I can't promise you this right now. Her words made Mark sigh in relief, who then picked up the knife and fork again and looked at Haley. What are you waiting for? The dishes won't taste good if they are cold. Haley looked at him with a look of grievance. Mark had just scolded her for asking to eat, and now he was complaining that the dishes would get cold. She felt that he had changed. Robert's face was a little disappointed. Why? he asked. Hilda, who was at the side, answered first. That's simple. A woman rejecting you is either because she likes someone else or she sees you as a backup. Robert's expression became even uglier at that statement, while Serena stayed quiet as she did not want to share her love experiences in front of others. Even though Robert did not know what was going on, he couldn't help but think, Serena should be happy that I asked her out. How could she reject me? I don't want to fall in love for the time being. I'm sorry, Robert, she apologized. It's okay, I can wait for you, Robert expressed as he thought of Serena working day and night to earn money. She was a very diligent person. Maybe it was because it was only her first day and she had a lot of things to do so he could give her time. Hilda was too lazy to interfere in other people's matters. Instead, she looked at Leo and said, Leo, let's not disturb other people's romance. Let's go over there and eat. No need, let's just sit here. It's rare to bump into someone familiar, Leo murmured. How come I didn't know you had such a beautiful niece? You never told me about her, she grunted. If Leo hadn't admitted Serena's identity in the beginning, she would have suspected their relationship was something else. Why do you have so much to say? Just order the food, Leo seemed to be very impatient while Hilda did not dare to say anything else, and just ordered food obediently. Her heart was full of disappointment. It was not easy to get Leo to spend a little time with her. After all the effort she put into everything, it had gone down the drain, and she was not happy. Robert also did not expect that their date had become a crowd of four people. Moreover, their relationship was so strange. It was not good for him to force Serena to do anything when there was an outsider present. Leo, eat this. Hilda immediately put food into Leo's bowl. Leo did not reject her offer. Leo, why don't you come with me to the movies? She further offered. I can't. I have something to do later, he grumbled. Leo, you said you would accompany me tonight. I don't care. You have to stay with me. Hilda whined and started to act coquettishly. Serena did not know what the relationship between the two of them was, but when she thought about the two of them wanting to be together at night, she lost her appetite. Excuse me, I'll be back in a minute. I just need to use the powder room, she mumbled. Serena walked to the powder room and looked at herself in the mirror. Because she had not recovered from her previous injuries, her face was still a little pale and haggard. Thinking of Hilda's charming face and alluring figure, she wondered what would she and Leo do tonight. She held up a handful of water and patted her face. What did that have anything to do with her? Why would she let her imagination run wild? Serena. A man's deep voice suddenly sounded in her ear. Serena turned and looked at Leo, who was standing behind her. You! How did you come in? This is the women's restroom! She shrieked. Of course I walked in, Leo said casually as if he was talking about the weather. What if someone sees you? Get out of here, she panicked. Get out. I will, but right now I only want to do one thing, Leo murmured. Serena met his burning gaze and carefully asked, What? Leo pulled her wrist into a bathroom stall and closed the door. Uncle Leo, this is the bathroom. You, don't get to do this here. Serena nervously gulped, purposely calling him uncle to remind them of their relationship. The anger that Leo had been suppressing for a few days finally erupted at that moment. Damn woman, if I hadn't come today, would you have agreed to his proposal? He gritted. When he remembered her blocking the bottle headed for Robert the other night, he hated her as much as he loved her, because the person he loved had risked her life for another man. Leo wished he could strangle Serena in her sleep for being so irritable, 
but then was immediately saddened by the thought of never seeing her again. After hesitating for a while, he let her go. He remembered his mother saying that loving someone meant pampering her and not hurting her. Earlier, when he called Mark and asked him to pick Serena up, he was in pain. He could only stand in front of the French window and watch her go further and further away. He thought he could let go, but when he heard Robert asking her out, he wanted to break his bones and claim her. Woman, no matter how much you hate me, I won't let you go this time. He didn't want to endure anymore, and he definitely didn't want to see her walk into someone else's embrace. He kissed Serena without fear. A familiar aura spread between their lips and teeth, reminding Serena of that fiery morning. Her body actually did not dislike it. It was just that because this was the washroom, there would be people coming in at any time. That was why she kept rejecting Leo's advances. Leo, please, let's leave this place first, okay? Serena, who was already skinny and weak, looked at Leo with tears in her eyes. Seeing Serena's expression, Leo wished he could rub her into his blood and bones so that she would never leave him again. I want you. I want you now. Leo undid her buttons like a wild beast. Serena had been rejecting him but couldn't anymore. Her knees went weak with just one kiss and she wanted him terribly. She felt like she had gone mad. How could she do such a ridiculous thing? The sound of high heels clicking against the floor resounded and Haley's voice suddenly filled the room. Serena! Serena was so scared that she almost screamed. Leo was just about to take off his pants when she quickly stopped him. But Leo was not willing to stop. His desires were already at their peak. How could he stop now? Leo, don't, Serena whispered and pouted pitifully. Leo frowned but really stopped and zipped his pants. Serena, I know you are inside, don't worry. This time I am not here to look for trouble. I just want to apologize for misunderstanding you. I am sorry. I didn't know you had a boyfriend. I thought you were interested in Marky. I won't do anything to trouble you in the future. Serena did not care about Haley and Mark at all. She only cared about how to face Leo. It's all over. I don't care. You don't need to be wary of me. I really don't care about Mark. I have already made an agreement with him and we will find an opportunity to separate in at most half a year. We won't have any conflicts in the future. That sounds good, Haley said and left. The sound of her high heels faded as she retreated. After Haley's interruption, the fiery atmosphere between Leo and Serena had lessened a lot. Serena relaxed a bit. Leo, we should go back now. Otherwise, everyone will get suspicious, she advised. Then who will extinguish the fire in my body? Leo countered and was in no mood to leave. Didn't you light it yourself? retorted Serena. Believe it or not, I can make love to you here. Leo threatened her coldly. Serena did not dare to be impudent anymore. I cannot help you with your needs here, she muttered. Hearing her words, Leo became much happier. He leaned over and whispered into her ear, Put out the fire tonight, or I will tell Robert about our true relationship. Since Haley is here, perhaps Mark is also here. You do not want them to know, do you? Serena was furious. You're actually threatening me, she gritted. It's up to you now. Although Leo wanted to make love to her right now, this was obviously not a place to have fun. She looked at him, his eyes still shining with desire. Serena couldn't help but sigh. Sure enough, men were refined when they were fully dressed. It's only when they took off their clothes that they were beasts. Leo smirked and left very naturally. It was as if this was not the ladies' restroom in the restaurant, but his house. Serena looked down at herself. He had unbuttoned most of her shirt, her skirt had been lifted to her waist, and he had left a bite mark on her chest. Was this man an animal? She couldn't believe they were about to do the deed here. Serena quickly tidied her clothes and came out to see herself blushing in the mirror. There was still a trace of lust in her eyes. Damn it, how would she go out to meet them now? She crazily splashed cold water on her face and washed all the makeup off. She waited until the redness on her face faded a little before she left the restroom. Fortunately, her skin was already very good, and she was still beautiful without makeup. When she arrived, she noticed that Leo and Robert were already in deep conversation.
When Serena returned from the restroom, she noticed that Leo and Robert were already deep in conversation. Leo's handsome appearance and elegant behavior clearly indicated that he was class apart among the crowd. How could he look not like a hooligan who was getting intimate with her in the washroom? Serena, what took you so long? The food is cold, Robert asked and was concerned. I'm sorry, I don't feel well today. Serena did not dare to look into Robert's eyes, as if she was scared that he would notice something. Leah was still reminiscing about how close he was with her a while ago. He almost got her. Serena resumed her dinner from before when those dishes were carried away by Leo. She glared at him. What are you doing? I'm starving. The food is already cold. If you eat this, it won't be good for your stomach. Leo had a serious expression on his face. He did not look like he was concerned about Serena. He looked like he was trying to hurt her. Uncle Leo, did you know how expensive that steak was? I only ate two bites, Serena muttered. Shortly, there was another steak for her. Leo had already placed an order for a fresh one before she came back. Hilda was unhappy. He had never cared so much about her. Leo, I'm still hungry. Can you accompany me for supper later? She asked. Leo looked at the watch in his hand. I have an appointment later. I'll ask the driver to take you back. Hilda persisted. You said you weren't busy before. Today is my birthday. Don't disappoint me. I said I don't have time. I'm done eating. You guys please carry on without me. Leo put down the knife and fork impatiently as he wiped the corner of his mouth and stood up. Take care, sir. Robert got up to bid him goodbye. Since Leo was Serena's relative, he had to treat him with respect no matter what. Hilda saw Leo leave and quickly put down her knife and fork. Leo, wait for me, she called out. After the two of them left, Robert relaxed. Serena, do you want to order something else? He questioned. This is enough, Serena murmured. She had been thinking about what Leo had said in the washroom. She was not paying attention to what Robert was saying to her. Robert nodded and waved his hand for the bill. A waiter walked towards them and answered respectfully, Mr. Damon has already taken care of the bill. Robert's dignity was hurt. He had been saving up for this occasion. Since this dinner was your uncle's treat, the next will be on me, he announced and eased up a little bit. This way he would have a chance to see Serena again. Serena pointed. Robert, I thought you would be busy with training at the studio. I can never be busy for you. How about we catch up after a week? It will give you time to think about us, Robert suggested, and Serena nodded. Good luck with your training. I will leave now, she announced. Robert held Serena's hand. You were not like this to me in the past. Why do I feel like you are trying to avoid me? He queried with a faint smile. Serena was taken aback. Is it? I am a little uncomfortable. I just had a small operation, she stammered. Operation? exclaimed Robert. Then why did you join the office so soon? You should be resting. It's okay. I know what I'm doing. I'm leaving now. See you next week, Serena murmured and hurriedly ran away. Robert looked at her leaving and frowned unhappily. He always felt that Serena was strange. Serena ran as fast as she could until Robert was out of sight. She then stopped and panted heavily. In the past, Robert sending her off was something she could not have wished for. Why was she so confused about Robert now? Just as she was engrossed in her thoughts, the sound of a horn rang in her ears. A Bentley stopped beside Serena. The window rolled down and a familiar face was revealed. Leo spat out two words coldly. Get in. Serena hesitated and refused to get in. She knew what would happen next once she got in the car. Do you want me to get out of the car and carry you? Mark is still in the restaurant. He should be done eating. If you do not want him to see you get in my car, he ordered. Serena opened the door and got in before he could finish his sentence. She did not know that this world was so small. There were familiar people everywhere. Leo instructed the driver, let's go back to the villa. Serena gently pulled Leo's sleeve. Can we not go to your villa? She requested as she was still confused about the kind of relationship she had with Leo. So in the car it is. Before this, he needed a lot of willpower to endure not wanting her. No, Leo, Serena whimpered. You can't reject me. Leo pressed a button to pull up the divider. Although the driver could not see, there would still be sounds. Serena was scared. 
Leo, didn't you give up on me last time? Why do you want to? She began but was cut off by Leo who held her chin and said coldly, Like I said, I will not, unless I'm tired of you. There was a trail of kisses that stretched from her neck all the way to her chest. Her heart was like a pool of water that had been completely thrown into chaos. The car had arrived at the villa at some point. The driver got out of the car sensibly and left the space for the two of them. If he would have been close enough, he would have faintly heard the moaning of a woman. When Leo stopped, Serena hung pitifully on his body like a rag. She did not have any strength left. Leo, can you take me home now? Serena asked. Leo's mood became much better. His voice was softer. Do you think you can satisfy me with just one visit? The night is still long, he stated. Leo wrapped his suit jacket around Serena and went upstairs. It was a long night indeed. It was not until three o'clock in the morning that Leo let her go. Serena fell asleep in his arms. Leo looked at the tiny woman who was covered in traces of him. The depression he was feeling for a few days had completely disappeared. He gently rubbed her cheek, but she protested a little. Serena, regardless of whether you hate me or not, I will never let you go. Serena woke up at 8, 30 in the morning in Leo's arms. Morning. Leo seemed to be in a good mood. His golden hair was shining like a halo in the sunlight. No part of his face was not delicate. When she opened her eyes and saw such a pleasant scene, she could not help but be stunned. You look smitten by me. Leo intimately scratched the tip of her nose. Leo, why are you so handsome? Your mommy must be very pretty, Serena commented and sighed sincerely. Of course, she is the most beautiful woman in the world. Leo's face lit up when he mentioned his mother, and at the same time, Serena's gaze went to the wall clock. Oh my God, I'll definitely be late today. Serena was so scared that her expression and tone changed drastically. Today was just her second day at work, and the thought of how her supervisor will torture her for this made her panic. You are already late. Why are you panicking? Leo asked and yawned lazily. You own your company, of course. You don't know how it is. Serena hurriedly got out of bed and picked up the scattered clothes. Their trail of clothes started from the door all the way to the bed. One could imagine how intense the battle last night was. Serena saw her shirt buttons torn apart by him, she was wondering how to sew them back or fix them. Why don't you check the closet? Leo teased. Serena opened the closet, which was full of women's clothes. Why didn't you tell me about this earlier? Leo had been shopping for her since she came to the villa last time. She randomly picked a pantsuit and was in a hurry, so she did not bother to peek at the price tag. She quickly took a shower, changed into her new clothes, and ran downstairs in high heels. He pulled her back into his arms. It seems like I didn't work hard enough last night. You seem to be in good spirits, he murmured. Serena was anxious to leave. Leo, don't tease me. I'm in a hurry, she exclaimed. You can go after breakfast. It's not good for you to work on an empty stomach, Leo advised. It's really late. The supervisor will rip my skin off. Let's talk about it later, Serena announced and ran out. A driver was waiting outside the door. Miss Jenner, allow me to drive you to the company. At that moment, Serena could not refuse. She just wanted to get to her office as soon as possible. Leo looked at the back of the little girl who left in a hurry, and the corner of his mouth curled into an elegant smile. Serena quickly rushed to her workplace. As she was riding the elevator, she knew that Joseph would make her life at the office hell. Serena... The supervisor has asked about you a couple of times. You are to report to him immediately. Be careful. The colleague beside her gave her a look. Okay, how could she be careful? Joseph already had a big problem with her, and to top it off, she was running really late now. She nervously went to Joseph's door and knocked on it. Come in, boomed a heavy voice. Serena pushed the door open and entered. Her colleagues behind her quietly prayed for her in their hearts as Joseph was infamous for being crafty and mean. Serena was still a rookie. She had no idea how to defend herself from her supervisor. At the same time, Joseph flung the document he was holding onto the table. Are you still interested in working here, Serena? It's the second day and you're late for work. Do you believe you are above everyone else because Mark hired you directly? 
he growled. I am sorry, sir. It was not on purpose. I will never be late again. Serena admitted her mistake. Joseph was still furious. Again? You are late today. What about that, he gritted. Serena was not sure how to respond. I don't know, she murmured in a meek voice. Joseph looked at her coldly. I want you to understand one thing. We are not a nameless entity. I hope you will follow the attendance rules strictly. Go and copy the rules of our company 500 times, he instructed. 500 times, Serena exclaimed. She had already read the company's regulations. The big and small clauses added up to more than a thousand words and most of them were almost useless. And he wanted her to write about 500,000 words. This was worse than a school imposition. Why are you still here? yelled Joseph. I am willing to accept disciplinary measures for my tardiness, but I am concerned that this punishment is motivated by retaliation for my interview. As an employee here to work, I fail to see how writing a 500,000 word imposition aligns with my job responsibilities, Serena said, sounding as firm as she could. However, Joseph looked at her with disdain. You're still an undergrad. What kind of skills do you bring to the table? If you want to keep working at this company, go make copies for me. If you can't finish copying, then leave right away, he shouted. Serena tightly clenched her hands, agreed that he was the reporting supervisor, but he could not bully people like this. She patiently asked, Sir, isn't 500 times too much? I still believe it's too little. And just so you know, don't even think about getting someone else to write it for you. I'll be keeping a close eye on the handwriting. Now please leave, he roared. Hey Jenner, what's wrong? inquired Arthur, her colleague. The supervisor wants me to copy the rules and regulations 500 times, she informed him. Arthur was also outraged. Is this supervisor out of his mind? How much time will it take to make 500 copies? Why does he hate you so much? He shrieked. There were too many people there, so Serena could not tell them about what happened back then. She could only shake her head. Nothing. Let me get it over with. People were gossiping about her bad luck behind her back. Serena was sitting at her desk, focused on the task at hand. She saw it as a way to improve her handwriting skills. No matter how quickly she wrote, it would still take her around 30 minutes to write a thousand words. She could only copy two pages per hour and complete 24 copies in a day. Even if she worked for 30 days straight, she would still need to copy 500 times, which would take her two weeks to finish without a break. Serena sighed. How did she get here? Joseph looked through the glass door and saw Serena was copying obediently. Stupid woman, let's see how long you will last. Serena kept copying day after day, and before she knew it, a week had gone by. During that week, she remained busy and calm, both Mark and Leo were unusually quiet and did not cause any trouble. She would occasionally run into Mark, but would only nod and greet him. She was no different from other employees. Finally, the weekend had arrived. She planned to take a good rest before she got a call from Robert. Surprisingly, she hadn't given a thought about Robert all week. That was strange. Serena, I'll wait for you at the Black Pearl restaurant tomorrow night. He informed her happily. The last time I saved you was just my instinct. Besides, I'm not hurt. You don't have to thank me, Serena murmured. I won't let the fact that you saved me stop me from asking you out on a casual date, all right? Or are you deliberately avoiding me? Robert asked. No, of course not. I just feel a little tired and want to rest, she replied. Serena had been berated a lot this week. She was managing her imposition well. But Joseph still felt that it was not enough. He tried new ways to torment her. She was just running mindless errands and the entire week was wasted. She was both physically and mentally exhausted. Robert was in no mood to give up. Come on, Serena, it's just dinner. I'll come and pick you up. Okay, then. Serena hung up the phone and lay on the bed, wondering whether she really liked Robert. If she did, why was she so scared to see him? Was she just assuming that she had a crush on him all these years? At Leo's villa. Lance knocked on the door and walked into the study. Sir, Robert booked a table for two at the Black Pearl restaurant. Leo stopped typing on the keyboard. He took off his silver-rimmed glasses and rubbed his nose. 
Do these trainees have so much time now? He asked. They seem to have a day off every week, replied Lance. Leo hadn't forgotten that Robert had confessed to Serena last week. It looked like he was going to try to pursue her, instruct the trainees to report every day. If they still want to sign the contract, they shouldn't waste the company's funds. If you ask me, they should be practicing more. Yes, sir. Knowing Leo's real intentions, Lance was trying hard to control his laughter. You have been busy overseas this week. Your schedule is free tomorrow. Do you want me to ask Miss Jenner to meet you? Sounds good. I miss her, Leo murmured. He had not slept well for a while without Serena beside him. Sir, how about a special plan for Miss Jenner? It will help her relax, and it could be just the two of you at a private location. It will not be easy for others to find out, Lance said. He had read a lot of romance novels with a CEO as a main lead recently and had learned all the tricks to woo a woman. Leo looked at him coldly. Should I be scared that others will see us when we are together? Of course not. I'm not saying that you're scared. It's more about Miss Jenner's feelings. Otherwise, you wouldn't have compromised. Thinking about this gave Leo a headache. It was evident that it would be resolved shortly. But that little girl refused to cancel the agreement with Mark. When he saw her, it was as if they were having an affair. Damn it. Leo angrily closed the computer and lit a cigarette. He took a deep breath. Boss, I feel like you're getting more and more involved in this. Do you think Miss Jenner has any feelings for you? Lance questioned. She only has that playboy in her heart. Leo blew out a smoke ring. Even though he had everything now, he couldn't win a woman's heart. Lance shook his head. Not necessarily. I think you're better than those pretty boys. Maybe Miss Jenner will fall for you someday. All the overbearing CEOs and novels are like that, as long as you're gentle and considerate. Leo's eyes lit up. Do you think I have a chance? He asked. Yes, I do, replied Lance. All right, go and prepare everything. Tomorrow, I'll take her out to relax. Leo was excited for the first time in years. Lance left happily. Leo's cold demeanor was hard to break through so it was good to see him more relaxed now. Half an hour later, Serena received a call from Robert. They were no longer going on a date tomorrow. His agreement was annulled. They could only meet after the training was over. Serena comforted Robert a few times and sighed in relief. Just as she hung up, another unknown number called. She didn't save the number, but she knew exactly who it was. She swallowed hard and answered, Hello? Are you asleep? Leo was relaxing in the bathtub and his voice had a slight magnetic quality. I'm still in bed, she replied. Yet to sleep. I want to see you tomorrow. Leo was never one to beat around the bush. I have plans tomorrow, Serena began to decline. Before she could finish, Leo interrupted. I'll be waiting for you downstairs at eight in the morning. If you don't come, you'll face the consequences. Not even a minute late. With that, he hung up the phone. Serena was so angry that she threw her phone, grumbling to herself. Just because you say you want to see me doesn't mean I do. Do you think you're some kind of king or something? I won't come. When Serena woke up, it was already seven in the morning. She was not used to sleeping until this late. She looked at her watch and noticed that she still had an hour before eight. She thought to herself, what would he do if she did not go? However, she instantly remembered his tone. If you don't come, I'll tell the Barclay family about us. Serena was upset, vigorously scratching her hair in frustration. The thought of being held hostage by him indefinitely was annoying. How long would this go on for? While pondering these thoughts, she found herself in front of her closet picking what to wear. Her closet was filled with clothes sent over by Leo. She had never worn these clothes before or even considered touching them. However, today was different. She felt an unexplained desire to put on these clothes and look her best for him. When choosing her undergarments, she chose everything lacy. She did not realize that unknowingly, she was getting closer and closer to the style he liked. She had even put on light makeup. After a few moments, Serena realized that she was already running five minutes late, so she rushed down the stairs. A Rolls Royce was parked outside the apartment building. The man leaned against the car, appearing as though there was no one else around. 
with one hand casually tucked in his pocket. His blonde hair was gently swaying in the breeze, and his blue eyes resembled the clear blue sky of the day. He stood there casually as if straight out of a movie. Serena, you're six minutes late, a devilish voice whispered in her ear. Serena had almost forgotten about the man's handsome appearance and mischievous ways. Leo, she timidly greeted. Come here, he commanded. As she walked towards him, he pulled her into his arms. So how am I going to punish you? She heard in a magnetic voice. She didn't know if it was because he was looking incredibly handsome today, but her heart was racing and her face turned red. Leo, please don't punish me, Serena pleaded. We will think about that, he replied, holding her chin and slowly landing on her red lips. This was not the same possessive kiss as before. It was gentle, like a soft spring breeze. Serena didn't dislike the tender kiss at all. Her heart raced, and she felt like she wasn't herself anymore. Leo let go of her and complimented her. You look beautiful today. Serena's face turned even redder as she had dressed up just for him. You have lipstick on your lips, she noticed. Can you wipe it off for me? He asked. Sure. Serena extended her white, delicate index finger and lightly touched Leo's lips, making him feel a shiver of excitement. Leo then pulled her into the car. Even though they were in a different car, Serena couldn't help but blush and feel her heart racing from everything that had just happened. Serena saw that the situation was slipping and quickly changed the topic. Leo, where are we going today? She questioned. You will know when we get there. Have breakfast first. Leo was holding his desire for her. Oh. Serena cutely held the box. Wow, oh, that's great. Everything in here looks like my favorite food. He actually remembered all that she liked to eat. Leo looked at her smiling profile and was happy himself. Try it. Serena took a bite of the sandwich. She absolutely loved it. It's delicious. Do you want to try it too? Okay, let me have a bite. Leo leaned in, but instead of taking the sandwich from her hand, he playfully nibbled on her lips, the touch gentle and lingering. Serena looked at him in a daze. Though they had kissed before, it was their first time kissing under such circumstances. Leo tenderly brushed a strand of hair from her face, his lips curling into a beautiful arc. Well, it is indeed delicious, he said, referring to either the sandwich or her lips. Regardless of which one, Serena was completely taken by him. Don't look at me like that, Leo. I'm too embarrassed to eat now. She turned her head away. All right, I won't look. You can eat. We're leaving anyway. Leo seemed different today. Serena carefully glanced back at him. He was typing away on his computer, wearing glasses that made him look even more refined compared to his usual arrogance and coldness. His hair swayed in the wind and the sun rays lit up his face as the car zoomed by. He was so handsome that he almost looked unreal, like someone from a TV show. Sensing her gaze, Leo looked at her, his deep blue eyes appearing even more mysterious behind his lenses. He took off his glasses, and Serena's breath caught in her throat. He was too handsome for words. Are you planning to eat, or are you full just by looking at me? He asked, smiling in a way that only made him more appealing. Leo, has anyone ever told you just how handsome you are? Serena whispered. The man smiled again, even more captivating than before. The car slowly drove out of the city, and Serena looked at the scenery on the highway. She was a little curious. Leo, where are you taking me? Cher asked again. You'll know when we get there. There's still about an hour's drive. You can sleep. Leo seemed to be very busy. His fingers danced on the keyboard, and he kept looking at the computer. Serena wasn't fond of napping on drives, so when she was bored, she spent her time playing online games. However, Lately, she had been busy with work and copying the company's regulations, leaving her no time to play. Nonetheless, she felt safe with Leo around and had become increasingly dependent on him, so she decided to indulge a bit. The game she was currently playing was a cultivation game, and she didn't like spending money on these online games. She wasn't like the RMB players who did pay. As the deputy sect master, she was always receiving messages whenever she logged in, Serena's game nickname was Tyrannical Iron Hammer, and she had been ridiculed for it many times. 
She had been playing the game for over two years and had only managed to reach her current position as vice sect master after countless trials and tribulations. The other members of the gang had always thought of her and the sect master as a couple. At first, she had tried to explain that they were wrong, but after a while she gave up and let them believe what they wanted. It was, after all, just a virtual world. While Serena never paid to play, the sect master was most likely a pay-to-win player. Running and maintaining the gang required a lot of money, and he would likely be basked in golden light. As dominating Iron Hammer, Serena replied, Is that so? Then we'll have the sect leader's wife soon. Little B texted, Isn't the sect leader's wife your wife? Don't act like you're not panicking. Some woman has been chasing after our sect leader since you've been offline. Every day she uses loudspeakers to confess her love. Serena texted, Wow, she's a rich person. Little C chimed in, Iron Hammer, you're still smiling. Tonight at 10 o'clock, she invited the sect master to a duel in Snow Wind Canyon. If she wins, the sect master has to marry her. Aren't you going to stop her? Domineering Iron Hammer. Why should I stop her? I'll just watch the show. Although Leo had been working on his computer, he kept glancing at Serena out of the corner of his eye. Was she playing a game? Looking at her smirk, Leo felt that there was something fishy going on. You still play games? He looked over and saw the game. It was a familiar page. This was the first Immortal Cultivation game he had released five years ago. It was a game he had created. Though he was a genius designer, he didn't like playing games. Yeah, this game is pretty fun. I've been playing it for over two years now. I love the style and the music. Do you like playing games? She asked. No, Leo replied. He only played to test the game and make sure there were no glitches or issues not to pass or waste time. What's that expression for? Is there good news? This game was designed by Leo, so he was quite familiar with it. Players could form a sect, get married, and even have children in the game. It was very realistic and human-like, even featuring a detailed wedding night animation. While many players got married in-game, Leo felt uneasy at the thought of this young woman marrying someone else. Even if it was just a virtual game, it didn't feel real. Whether it was virtual or not, she belonged to him alone. It's not my good news. I just logged on and found out that a girl from our gang is chasing our sect master with a loudspeaker. She even challenged him to a duel in Snow Wind Canyon tonight at 10. If she wins, she gets to marry him. Do you want her to win? Leo asked. It doesn't matter. The gang has always assumed that our sect master and I are a couple, but now that we have someone else, that's good too. Leo was intrigued by Serena. Perhaps there was some connection between her and the sect master, as he couldn't understand why everyone assumed they were together. He glanced at Serena's username, Domineering Iron Hammer, and almost chuckled. The phone vibrated. Leo picked up the phone, speak. When Leo was talking to Serena suddenly, his phone vibrated and he picked it up. Speak, he grumbled. On the other end of the line was Lance, who informed him, Sir, the Crystal Mountain Hot Spring is closed for repair. I just checked again. Can I get you an alternative Rainflower Hot Spring? It is equally good. Leo was just happy to have Serena with him, so he replied, Go ahead. Okay, Lance murmured. Also, we have just one problem. We can't set up the whole place. That's fine, Leo replied, hanging up the phone before he turned to the driver. Let's go to the Rainflower Hot Spring instead, he instructed. Of course, sir, the driver replied. When Serena heard about the hot springs... She couldn't help but flush as images of her and Leo doing something inappropriate flashed in her mind. What are you planning to do? She asked nervously, forgetting to address him by name. Leo saw the blush on her face and grinned mischievously. I want to go to the hot spring, he replied casually. Alone with me? Serena stammered. What else do you think? Leo countered with a suggestive tone. Serena's face turned red with embarrassment at the thought of being alone with Leo in such an uncertain place. You can't do that, she protested. Do what? Leo asked as he closed his laptop and moved closer to her. Serena shifted to the side, but the car's small space limited her escape, while Leo's proximity made her even more nervous. I mean, she trailed off. 
Leo loved the gentle look on her face, like that of a kitten. He wanted to crush her and ravage her beneath him, but he reminded himself to be gentle, as Lance had advised him to do with Serena. He hadn't brought her this far just for a fling. He would be patient and respectful if he wanted to be intimate with her. Serena, are you suggesting that I will do something to you? I just want to take you out to relax. Let's talk about it later tonight, he murmured, trying to keep his voice gentle. The car pulled over after a while, and the driver announced, Sir, we are here. Leo moved away from Serena, and she sighed in relief. As the name suggests, the Rainflower Hot Springs were adorned with numerous flowers that bloom in all four seasons. When the wind blew, it was like a shower of petals. The spring season was particularly beautiful, with several outdoor hot springs surrounded by cherry blossoms, which was a prominent feature of the place. Serena stepped out of the car and was greeted by the sight of beautiful and dreamy architecture. The road on either side was adorned with beautiful flowers, and a gentle breeze caused her skirt to sway amidst the floral fragrance. Serena ran her fingers through her hair, feeling like she was in a movie. She fell in love with the place at first sight. What are you waiting for? Let's go inside, Leo urged as he pulled Serena into the courtyard. As they arrived late, the only room left was the deluxe room among the other prime suites on the seventh year floor. Serena decided to go to the common pool first to gather her thoughts while Leo was checking in. Come over to room 710 after you're done. I'll be waiting for you there, Leo said before she left. Serena blushed and softly replied, Okay? Serena did not realize that Leo was not threatening her, nor did she think about avoiding him. She took the clothes Leo bought for her, especially for this trip, and went to the changing room near the pool. Peeking into her bag, she found a sexy swimsuit that didn't belong to her. Clearly, Leo had snuck it in. Damn it! That man does it every time! She huffed. Serena did not know where they were headed, otherwise she would have packed accordingly. With no other swimsuit at hand, she decided to just wear that. She took a dip in the pool and then relaxed on the sunbed for a while thinking about her situation with Leo. It had already been a while since they arrived, and he didn't want to think about how angry he would get if she kept him waiting too long, so she decided to go to the room. She covered the sexy swimsuit with a short robe that she fortunately packed and headed to his room. As Serena walked down the corridor, she unexpectedly ran into the two people she would never want to run into, especially given that she was here with Leo. Haley had been worried about her relationship with Mark, who had been distant from her lately, so she had booked a hot spring to spend time with him and strengthen their bond. Serena, what are you doing here? Mark had been feeling down during their journey, but his face lit up when he saw Serena walking towards them in her robe, adorned with red flowers and subtle makeup. Serena, on the other hand, was taken aback by his sudden appearance. Although they had agreed not to interfere in each other's private lives, Serena couldn't help but wonder if Mark would be happy to know about her relationship with his Uncle Leo. Serena acknowledged coldly, Hi Mark Haley. Mark was overjoyed to see Serena, but she seemed distant and cold towards him. It made him feel like his hot face was being met with a cold reception. As he looked around the hot spring, he realized that most of the visitors were couples or families. He wondered if Serena had come with Robert, her boyfriend, Mark and Haley had also booked a private room for couples, but the thought of Serena being with another man made him feel unhappy. Haley, on the other hand, had realized that Serena had a boyfriend and had no interest in Mark. She had even apologized for their previous encounter. Serena, too, didn't want to make things awkward and politely excused herself. As she passed by Mark, he wanted to say something, but he knew he had no right to stop her. Mark, let's go in. Haley was in a good mood and did not notice the awful look on Mark's face. Mark complied, feeling a sense of disappointment. He hadn't been intimate with Haley lately, and for some reason Serena's face kept popping up in his mind. But just as he was about to give up and accompany Haley, he saw Lillian and a group of rich women entering the hot spring area. In the past, Mark would have been too nervous to even try to hide from Lillian, who knew Haley and would likely be furious if she saw Mark with her. At that moment, Mark was relieved to see Lillian and her friends enter. 
He put on a serious expression and said, Haley, this is not good. My mother is also here at the hot spring. Haley immediately felt a jolt. Mark's mother Lillian had confronted her several times before about her relationship with Mark. She would be livid if she saw them here together and would do anything to destroy Haley. What should we do? Let's go into the room, Marky, Haley suggested. It's too late for me to run away. You should leave first. Go to your room for now. My mother probably came on purpose since she knew I was here. If she sees you, she might create a scene. Since Serena is here, I'll use her as a shield, Mark said, using Lillian's appearance as an excuse to approach Serena. Haley wanted to say something, but Mark pushed her away. She was afraid of Lillian, so she willingly avoided the situation. Mark, why are you here? Whom did you come with? Lillian asked, looking suspiciously at Mark. Mom, Serena, and I came together. She just left for the room right now, Mark lied. Lillian's face lit up with a smile when she heard who Mark was with. Oh, with Serena, that's good. You two should hurry up and have a big chubby baby for me. In this kind of setting, couples often engaged in more intimate activities, and Lillian knew it. She smiled. Mark, which room did you book? I'll come to find you once I am at leisure. Room 707, replied Mark. All right then, have fun, son, Lillian chirped and left with a huge grin on her face. After bidding farewell to Lillian and her group, Mark quickly went to search for Serena, confident that she wouldn't have gone too far. When Mark found Serena, she was at the door of room 710. Just before she could enter, Mark called out to her, Serena. Serena turned around and saw that Haley was not with Mark. What's up? She asked warily. It seems like we're going to have some more fun today, Mark said with a hint of excitement, a sly smile on his lips. After bumping into Lillian, he lied to her that he had been there with Serena. To let Serena know about his spot plan, Mark went to her and informed her that they would have stayed together. However, Serena grew suspicious. What do you mean? Aren't you with Haley? She queried. My mom and her friends are here, so I told Haley to take the next room. If my mom sees Haley, she'll definitely get angry. I just want to use you as a shield, he informed her. Serena didn't want to interact with Mark too much unless it was required for their act. After all, Mark had a girlfriend and getting too close could cause problems for both of them. Meanwhile, Leo was standing by the door, listening to their conversation with a pale face. He was waiting for Serena's response. If she dared to agree, he would rush out and strangle her. Okay, then I'll handle Lillian until she leaves. Serena had to give in. Leo had his hand on the door and was about to barge into their conversation, but when he thought of Serena's pitiful expression, he hesitated and stayed put. He remembered she had once told him, even if I don't care about my reputation, what about the Jenner family? I can't discredit the Jenner family. And despite how much he hated it, he knew Serena cared deeply about her family and would not want their name dragged through the mud any more than it already was. He didn't want to hurt Serena at all. He clenched the doorknob tightly, his knuckles turning white. But in the end, he refrained from opening the door. Leo held a grudge against the Barclay family, and even if his relationship with Serena was exposed, he wouldn't lose anything. However, he cared deeply for Serena and didn't want to put her in any danger. He himself was fearless, but she had too many connections and ties that could be at risk. As Serena and Mark ended their conversation, they heard the sound of something breaking on the ground. What's wrong? Mark asked, noticing Serena's troubled expression. Serena bit her lip and replied, Nothing. Let's go, she said, and they went into his room. She knew that Leo was upset, but was grateful that he had shown her some consideration. She thanked him in her heart. Haley was in room 708, next door to Mark's. He had purposely booked her a separate room in advance, in case he wanted some time alone. Mark had been unhappy when he arrived with Haley, but when he entered his room with Serena, he felt excited. The suite was warm and cozy, with everything from the outdoor hot spring to the bedroom perfectly arranged. Haley had booked this room, especially for herself and Mark intending to rekindle her romance with Mark. As they entered the room, the atmosphere became tense. Mark looked at Serena, who was reserved and hesitant. 
You came here to soak in the hot spring. Go ahead and enjoy it. I'll stay in the room. Mark took the initiative to speak. Serena glanced at the small garden full of flowers and really wanted to soak in the hot spring. However, her swimsuit was too revealing, and she couldn't take it off in front of Mark. Since Mark suggested that she should go ahead and soak, she decided to do so. Okay. But please don't come out, Serena requested. Sure, Mark nodded as Serena walked out of the room and closed the door behind her. After checking the water temperature, Serena took off her robe and got into the hot spring. The warmth of the water made her feel relaxed and comfortable. She took out her phone and texted Leo, saying, I'm sorry. Meanwhile, Leo was smoking a cigarette in anger. He was furious. Woman, you're quite bold, he texted back. Even through the screen, Serena could sense Leo's irritation. She shrank a little and replied, Leo, I had no choice. Who would have thought that Lillian would suddenly show up? I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? How are you going to make it up to me? Leo countered, seeing that she didn't seem to have any sense of guilt and had even sent him a pitiful emoji. Serena blushed when she saw the word make it up. What kind of compensation do you want? She asked. You know, Leo replied. Serena knew exactly what he meant. Leo had previously said that he wouldn't let go of her until he was bored of her, and this proved that he wasn't yet. Then I'll come to you tonight, Serena replied, realizing that she was no longer repulsed by the idea and had even unknowingly indulged in it. This time you take the initiative, Leo replied. Serena's heart was already racing, and she didn't dare to reply. Serena couldn't help but feel nervous when Leo asked her to take the initiative in their next encounter. Previously, he had always been the one to lead. As she was lost in her thoughts, there was a light knock on the door. It was Mark who asked if he could bring in the drinks that his mother had bought for them. Serena quickly put her phone aside and submerged herself in the water. Although she considered Mark a gentleman, she didn't want to take any chances. As Mark entered the room, he saw Serena in the water, blushing and looking more beautiful than ever. The sparkling water made her black lace swimsuit look even sexier. He quickly looked away. I am putting it here. Remember to drink. Mark couldn't help but feel a mix of emotions. He tried his best not to look at Serena for too long and placed the drinks on the side. As he left, Serena felt embarrassed and wondered if Mark thought she was promiscuous. Trying to shake off her insecurities, she drank all the orange juice from the glass. Meanwhile, Mark couldn't help but feel a burning desire for Serena, even though he couldn't see much through the water. Mark shut the door, feeling torn. He hadn't expected Serena to look this sexy, Though he couldn't see her clearly through the water, he was certain that she was gorgeous. A burning desire for Serena lit within him. Outside the door, Lillian had just finished delivering the drinks and was leaving with her friends, all smiles on their faces. Is the medicine really effective? She questioned. Absolutely. I guarantee that you'll have a grandson soon, said one of them. Fantastic. Once little Barclay has a child... His grandfather will give him all of his shares. That damn bastard will get nothing, another one of the women said. Why did you feel the need to drug him? As a mother, don't you believe in your son's ability? Another woman asked, confused. Lillian sounded resigned. It's because my son has been enchanted by another woman. I'm afraid he won't touch Serena. Being a mother is a tough job, someone commented. Indeed. My boy excels at everything, but in this regard, I'm very worried about him. Since I saw him drink orange juice with my own eyes, the two of them are probably already at it. Their laughter trailed off as they left. Leo, who was smoking in the courtyard, overheard what they said. His expression turned cold. How dare these women talk about his Serena like that? Leo gazed at room 707, which had a tightly closed door and already had a plan in mind. Serena emerged with a towel wrapped around her to freshen up. Why did she feel so lightheaded? Serena assumed it was due to coming out of the hot spring that her body was overheated. But why was she so dizzy that she nearly lost her balance? Mark. Serena pushed the door open and walked in. How did she become so weak? She only pushed it slightly, but she had to use all her strength. What's wrong? Be careful. Mark saw Serena in a daze and quickly stepped forward to catch her. 
Mark held Serena, clad only in a bath towel. The more their relationship grew, the more uncertain were their actions. Mark's hands around her waist felt slightly hot. The wild beast within him seemed to have unleashed, making him unpredictable. Mark, can you release me now? Serena whispered, and also felt that her body had changed so inexplicably. I'm sorry. Mark suppressed the wild thoughts in his mind and let go of Serena's body. Serena overestimated herself. Her footsteps were feeble and she was falling again. The towel on her body slipped off, revealing her figure. Mark took just one glance and he could not resist anymore. The woman's skin under his body was as smooth as cream. Besides a scar on her waist, there was no flaw in her entire body. It was not that he had never been with a woman before, nor was he a person who had an insatiable desire. At this moment, he just wanted Serena. He wanted her now. He slowly leaned over and somehow tried to kiss Serena's lips. Mark, what are you doing? She yelled. Mark suddenly collapsed to the ground and Serena saw Leo looking down at her. Leo, she exclaimed. Leo gave Serena a cold stare as she stood there with nothing on her. Mark had seen her in this state without any hesitation. What the hell is going on, Serena? If I hadn't arrived in time, what would you two have done? Leo yelled. Serena's eyes were misty and her cheeks were abnormally flushed. She turned her body and looked at Leo with a blurry consciousness. Leo then picked her up and carried her to their room before placing her on the bed. Serena, are you feeling all right? Do you feel weird or ill? He asked with a concerned expression on his face. Serena nodded without realizing it, then called out his name and climbed onto his body. This time she had taken the initiative. They created a mess in the bed and Serena's forwardness drove Leo crazy. Meanwhile, in the neighboring room, Haley was feeling uneasy. She was worried that Serena and Mark would do something together. When Lillian and her friends went to the hot spring, Haley returned to room 707. On entering, she saw Mark lying on the floor, disrobed. Thankfully, Serena wasn't there. Haley breathed a sigh of relief and gently patted Mark's cheek. Marky, what's wrong? Wake up. Suddenly, Mark pushed her to the ground and started undressing her. Instead of getting angry, Haley thought that Mark had finally realized her worth, which made her break into a small smile. But what Mark said next shattered Haley's heart. He moaned Serena's name in her ear. At that moment, he was only thinking of Serena. It was clear that he had feelings for her. Tears streamed down Haley's face as she struggled to believe that the man she loved so deeply had someone else's name on his lips. Haley was still in a state of shock. Mark wouldn't fall for Serena. It must have been her who seduced him. She still refused to believe that Mark would betray her. A cold fury surged through Haley's eyes and she felt that Serena couldn't be trusted alone with Mark. If Serena really did sleep with Mark one day, then what was the point of Haley's loyalty all these years? Serena, I won't forgive you, she gritted to herself. Meanwhile, Serena slept peacefully in Leo's arms like a kitten, unaware of her surroundings. Her arms wrapped tightly around his waist as she continued to rest. Leo, on the other hand, was wide awake, silently admiring her. He couldn't help but wonder what magic this woman possessed to have him so captivated. Serena finally woke up at eight o'clock in the night, rubbing her eyes in confusion. What time is it? She asked. In the room, the only source of light was the faint glow from the wall lamp. Leo checked his watch. It's already past eight. Are you hungry? He questioned. I'm starving, Serena replied, playfully nibbling his chest. Are there any people as insane as you? Leo couldn't help but smile at the sight of the cute, angry woman. It was a rare moment of compassion from him. This time, it's not me who wanted you, but you who wanted me, he teased. Serena scratched her head. How did I become so crazy? She never imagined that she would do something so impulsive. You're a fool. You didn't even realize you were drugged. If I hadn't arrived quickly, who knows what might have happened between you and Mark, Leo stated in a scolding voice. Was it the glass of juice? Lillian was the one who sent it. No wonder Mark was looking at me weirdly. That must be it. Serena finally concluded what had happened. Thankfully, there was no harm done, and Leo's main concern was whether or not she was hungry. Do you want to eat on your own, or should I bring something for you? He asked. I'll eat on my own. 
Serena lifted the blanket and saw the marks on her body, particularly on her neck. Leo, how can I show up to work like this tomorrow? I have to get back home quickly. Let's head back to the city tomorrow morning. But these marks? Serena scrunched up her nose. How would her colleagues at the office react to her? Let's eat. Leo replied without bothering to explain. He wasn't sure whether Mark had tried to touch Serena due to the effects of the drug or if he was genuinely interested in her, but he wasn't going to give anyone the opportunity. Okay, Serena said, quickly turning her attention to the food. The table was set with chicken Caesar salad and Southwest chicken wrap, along with lemonade and wine. Looking at the exquisite dishes, Serena's appetite grew. She was an absolute foodie and wasn't afraid to indulge. After sleeping for half a day, she was now starving. Is it good? Leo asked. Yes, it's delicious, Serena replied, eating quickly but still maintaining an elegant poise. One couldn't miss the nobility in her. It was inbred. There is a noticeable difference between you and your sister. She lives a life of luxury every day. You, on the other hand, can adapt in any situation, Leo remarked. Gwen is still young and foolish. Jenners are going through tough times, so I'm trying to save as much as possible, Serena explained. Leo twirled the wine glass in his hand and spoke with his usual cool tone. Since the Jenners are in such a difficult situation, why don't I propose a deal? What kind of deal? Serena asked and blinked her big eyes at him. I know your family's company has been struggling recently, and the banks aren't willing to give you a loan. So... How about I invest a hundred million dollars in the family business, Leo proposed. Serena couldn't believe it. It was a huge amount of money and she wondered what the conditions could be. Is there a catch? She asked. Leo smiled and took a sip of his wine. The conditions are simple. I want you. Serena thought he was joking, but Leo clarified that it was not just her body. He wanted her heart and soul. Serena was at a loss for words. She was flattered and offended at the same time. Is it too much to ask? If a hundred million dollars isn't enough, you could name your price, Leo said. Serena stared at Leo for a while. She was muddled and was already under contract with Mark. She couldn't break it for Leo's offer. Mark helped her when her family was in distress. If she breached her contract with Mark because of Leo's high price, that would be immoral. Leo had already figured out Serena's personality. He knew her moral ground was not letting her make a decision. This hurdle between him and Serena was whether she could cross it. You don't have to answer me right away. You have one month to decide. Within this month, you must cut off all ties with Mark. If you can't do it, I will retract my offer. Leo didn't want Serena to drag things out with Mark. He was unsure whether Mark's interest in Serena was due to the drug or was it genuine. Serena was torn. As a member of the Jenner family... She wanted to help them out of their financial crisis. Leo's offer of $100 million could do that. But how would she face Barclays after this? According to her, Mark was a decent guy, a gentleman. He treated her with respect and was always humble. Nonetheless, she said, Okay, I'll give you an answer in a month. But I have one condition. You can't have any physical contact with other men during this time, and you can't agree to be someone else's girlfriend. Looking back, Serena wondered if she would have ever done that if Leo hadn't ruined her relationship with Mark. Serena agreed, I promise. Even if it's Mark, you can't spend the night in his room, Leo stated as he wasn't done with his conditions. Leo, sometimes in order to hide the truth of our relationship, I need to. There are no other intentions, Serena protested. I don't want to hear any excuses. If you can't do it, the deal will be over, Leo announced. Serena agreed to his conditions promising not to have physical contact with any other men for a month, including Mark, and not spending the night in his room. The $100 million was a huge amount for Serena and her family. With that much money, her parents wouldn't have to go around borrowing from people. After agreeing to the deal, they enjoyed their meal, and Serena ate till she was full. Leo found her cute. He reached out and caressed her hair. Come on, let's go out for a walk. What if we run into Mark and the others? Serena pointed out. Leo was disappointed. Why don't I go and sit in a hot spring? I still have something to do at 10 o'clock tonight, she said, remembering a good show that she wanted to watch in the canyon. She and the sect master were good friends in the online world, 
and she wanted to see who was pursuing him so fervently. Sure, go ahead, Leo said before leaving the room to have someone clean up the room. Serena didn't bother with the swimsuit and went straight into the water naked. As she was getting comfortable, she saw Leo leaning against the door and whistling. She quickly covered her chest and glared at him. You pig, Leo smirked. I've seen it already, he shouted and sat by the door in his bathrobe. The resort was nestled in the wilderness, and it was peaceful at night, with only the sound of crickets. Leo took out a cigarette from his pack, but decided not to smoke in front of Serena. The yard was filled with the faint fragrance of flowers, and Serena relaxed as she leaned against the hot spring. Leo silently watched as she closed her eyes and relaxed in the water, her hair gently falling on the water's surface. The dim lighting in the yard made her look even more serene and beautiful, bringing out his desire to protect her. They enjoyed the warm atmosphere and didn't speak for a while. After soaking in the water for a while, Serena got up and announced, I'm going to get out now. I don't want you leering at me. Leo nodded and went back to the room, not wanting to make things difficult for her. It was almost time for the show. Leo turned on his phone and started downloading the app for the Immortal Cultivation game while Serena rushed into the room wearing her pajamas. It's almost 10 o'clock. Leo, I'm going to play a game now. Don't bother me. Sure thing, Leo answered. Serena quickly logged into her game account and went straight to Snow Canyon. The game was all about style. The characters and scenery were beautifully rendered, especially in the snow and ice, where people from different sects and schools gathered. Serena flew over on her sword and landed beside her own gang. Little A, was I late? She asked. Iron Hammer, why are you acting so careless? She stole your man. How can you let that slide? Little A replied. However, Serena was not amused. I already said he's not my man. Why don't you believe me? I'm here to watch the show. Little A was in no mood to listen to her. I really admire you. If the sect master gets taken away, you'll regret it. Suddenly, the crowd began to stir. A person flew over from the horizon. The sect master is here, look! Little A exclaimed. Serena saw a white phoenix approaching from afar. A man in white clothes was standing on top of Sky Bully's head. His long hair was fluttering in the wind. He looked like an immortal who had descended to the mortal world. Serena couldn't help but sigh. Having money is great. The sect master's equipment must have cost a lot of money to synthesize. It looks really cool. Of course, but that woman is pretty good too. Look, she's here. As Serena and her team approached, they noticed a strange sight on the horizon. It turned out to be a rare mythical creature, a fire dragon, ridden by a woman in a long red dress. Serena couldn't help but think, wow, she must have some serious in-game cash to afford that kind of equipment. I could never compete with pay to win players like her. The fire dragon and its rider landed on a high stage, and the battle began. The opposing team, made up of pay to win players, was ready to show off their expensive gear and abilities. During the match, Serena's teammate Little A commented on their sect master's wealth, saying that he had spent thousands of dollars to synthesize the divine beast, and at least a hundred thousand dollars on his equipment. Iron Hammer was shocked at the amount of money spent, while Little A teased her for not trying to get closer to their wealthy sect master. Suddenly, the man in white clothes approached Serena and picked her up, confusing the opposing team. Serena quickly messaged their sect master, Gladiator, asking what he was doing. He replied that he was just demonstrating for the team. The woman in the red dress, named Athena, accused Gladiator of seducing her and challenged him to a fight. Serena was caught in the middle of their argument and urged them to continue their battle without involving her. Athena became increasingly aggressive and demanded that Gladiator marry her if she won the fight. Gladiator confidently refused, and the match began. Serena sat on the edge of her seat, watching the intense battle unfold. Serena sighed. Wow, that's some good equipment. I can't compare to pay to win players like them. The players in white and red landed on a high stage, and everyone was excited for the battle to begin. The pay-to-win players were about to show off their skills. Iron Hammer asked, Hey, little A, how much do you think our sect master's clothes are worth? Tens of thousands of dollars? Little A replied, 
It's worth much more than that. You're underestimating our sect master. He spent tens of thousands of dollars recently to synthesize that divine beast, not to mention his equipment. It probably cost over a hundred thousand dollars. The Iron Hammer exclaimed, Wow, that's so expensive. Suddenly, a man in white clothes appeared and picked up Serena. The Iron Hammer was confused, and her head was filled with question marks. Even though it was just a game, the scene was very realistic. The Iron Hammer's face turned red. Serena panicked and quickly typed on her phone. Sect Master, what are you doing? Gladiator responded, Let me show you. The woman in red, whose game name was Athena, flew in front of the two of them and accused Iron Hammer of seducing Gladiator. Serena was getting annoyed. She couldn't understand why Athena was involving her in their matter. Miss Athena, please continue fighting and don't worry about me. Why, are you scared to fight me? If you don't fight, you have to leave the group and apologize. Athena's words were getting more and more uncalled for. Serena didn't know what she had done to deserve such treatment. Before Serena could respond, Gladiator spoke up. You're the one who wanted to fight me. If you withdraw, I'll cancel our previous agreement. Athena replied, Fine, let's start now. If you win, you have to marry me. I won't lose, Gladiator said confidently. Serena could feel the tension rising as the two players with top equipment faced off. She moved her virtual seat to the front row to get a better view. Gladiator put her down and messaged her privately. Wait for me. I have something to tell you later. Iron Hammer replied, Okay. The battle was intense, with white and red lights flashing back and forth in the arena. Everyone was on the edge of their seats trying to predict the winner. Both players had evenly matched equipment, so the outcome relied on their improvised tactics and battle experience. 30 seconds later, the battle ended in a bright flash of light. Gladiator's final move was too fast to see, and no one knew how he won. Athena collapsed in defeat while Gladiator stood tall in his white robes. Since you lost, I won't marry you, he declared firmly. He landed beside Serena, but before he could say anything, a barrage of pink love bubbles appeared on the screen. Gladiator had given her 1,114 sweethearts, which were worth over $150. Serena was stunned. Sectmaster, are you trying to use up all your money? She questioned. In the next second, Gladiator knelt down on one knee and presented her with a mermaid tear. This item required expensive materials to synthesize and was worth over $100. Serena used to scoff at such expensive in-game items, preferring to spend her money on real-life experiences. But now, she was starting to understand the appeal. Gladiator typed out a line of words. Little Hammer, I have known you for two years. Although we have never met before, I think I am crazy. I actually fell in love with your virtual persona. Let's get married. Serena was shocked by the sudden confession. She still remembered the first time she met Gladiator. At that time, she was still a new player. The newbie's mission was to go to the snow mountain to kill a snow monster. She did not know how to fuse equipment. She was killed by snow monsters again and again. Just as she was about to unload the game, a white robe appeared in front of her. Hey, little hammer, don't you know how to fuse equipment? What is fuse equipment? Iron Hammer asked. Dumb. Follow me, he instructed. Why should I follow you? Serena asked. If you don't follow me, I'll kill you right now the gladiator threatened. Serena was annoyed. You're bullying me, she snapped. Serena looked at the man's level and had no choice but to obediently follow him. Who would have thought that he would actually help her complete the mission with just one move? Serena's eyes sparkled as she said to him, Great God, take me as your disciple. The gladiator refused. I don't make disciples. It's too troublesome. Serena begged him. Then can you bring me along to play? I don't know anything. No, he said. If you don't, I'll follow you. From that day on, Serena went online every day to look for that man. Then she quickly ran in front of him. When he rode a flying horse and flew in the sky, she followed him on the ground. One day, he invited her to join his sect and made her the vice sect master. Serena gradually became familiar with him and would tell him anything. Because she was a virtual character, she told him everything but she never thought that one day her great God would confess his love to her. 
The surrounding onlookers started to tease her, saying, accept him, agree to him. Serena felt dizzy. Anyway, it was just a virtual marriage. It was just a game. If she agreed to it, it shouldn't matter, right? If she didn't agree, he would lose face in front of so many people. Just as Serena was about to respond, a crack suddenly appeared in the sky like an eggshell breaking. The other players were shocked by the scene. Could it be a god? The highest level in this game was immortal. It took a lot of experience for a player to reach that level. There was only one person who had ever gone from immortal to god in the entire server. Although there were many cool items and equipment that could be purchased in the game using real money, the Ascension Quest had nothing to do with money. Gladiator was only a step away from ascending and becoming an immortal. A giant dragon head appeared in the crack. Looking closely at the dragon's head, there was a person dressed in black clothes, almost blending in with the blackness. If the gladiator and the fire dragon weren't already stunning and impressive enough, the black dragon exuded an aura of menace from head to toe. Someone had already recognized this person's identity. Exalted God, the only deity in the entire area. Back in the day, the black dragon was a legend in the entire sect. Wherever he went, there would be a group of people surrounding him. However, he hadn't been online for the past two years. Why would he appear in the game again today? The black dragon's body emerged from the cracks bit by bit and hovered in the sky. The whole sky was shrouded in darkness. The special effect was very realistic, making one feel as if they were in the real world. The other players were going crazy. God is coming towards me. It's me. It's me. I can finally get close to my idol. As everyone's characters were busy arguing, he directly landed next to Serena. Come with me. Serena was just admiring the great god moments ago, but his sudden actions startled her so much that she almost hit her phone on her nose. She cautiously texted, Are you talking to me? Yes, came the reply. At that moment, Serena was so excited that her hands were shaking. If this were not a virtual character, she wanted to dive into her phone and get an autograph. On the side, Gladiator was displeased. Little Hammer, where is your response? he demanded. The black dragon scorned. Haven't I made myself clear? The spectators were even more excited. Only Serena was confused. Do you know me? She questioned. It's not important, he snapped. Serena was a little speechless. If he did not know her, why did he want her to go with him? Gladiator was truly angry. Don't you know that a gentleman does not take advantage of others? The answer was one word, idiot. Gladiator's avatar was more modest and gentler. He said softly, Since that's the case, why don't we let Iron Hammer make her own choice? Whom does she want to leave with? Serena's character stood in the arena. If she were allowed to make her choice, of course, she would choose the sect leader. After all, the sect leader was not only a teacher, but also a friend. How could she hurt him? Just as she was about to respond, Serena received a private message. It was actually from the great god. Serena, if you dare to leave with him, you will surely die. He addressed her by name. In other words, he knew her. Who are you? How come I didn't know that I had such a powerful ally by my side? Serena was flustered. The black dragon was not budging. Don't worry about who I am. If you don't leave with me today, you will face the consequences. Hey, Serena typed again, but the person did not reply. Even if they knew each other, it did not matter. This was just a virtual world. Could he have something on her? Impossible. What weakness could she possibly have? Despite thinking this, Serena was like a devil bewitched by those four words, replaying them over and over in her mind. I'll go with you. She walked towards the black dragon. Other players were going crazy. Iron Hammer, are you crazy? They all shouted in unison. Don't you want our sect leader? However, Iron Hammer had already given up. I'm sorry, Gladiator, she apologized. Serena had a feeling that if she didn't go with this man, he would do something drastic. Although she didn't know what he was capable of, sometimes it was the unknown that was the scariest. She left with the man and received a private message from Gladiator. Why are you doing this? Gladiator, I really don't want to embarrass you, but this person is someone I know. If I don't go with him, he will make me face the consequences. Little Hammer... 
We've known each other for more than two years. Since we're both from the same city, why don't we meet up? Serena's fingers paused slightly. She had always felt that meeting people from the internet was something done by children. She was a mature adult. How could she engage in such a childish act? Before she could reply, Leo walked into the bedroom. What are you doing? He asked. His mouth went dry the moment he looked at her. He could not have enough of her. He bent over and hugged her from behind. His thin lips let out a soft sigh beside her ear. You're such a seductive demon. Serena remained silent. Why do you keep attracting people? Leo asked. Now what did I do? Serena protested. Let go of me, Leo. I just met a crazy god. She didn't have time to explain who the great god was or to respond to Gladiator's request to meet up. Her earlobe was bitten heavily. A crazy god? Leo exclaimed. Yeah, I don't know how I offended him. It's all bizarre. Forget it. You don't play games. Even if I told you, you wouldn't understand. Leo wanted to eat her up. She was like a restless demon. It was fine if she didn't act this way in real life, but in the online world, she attracted too many people. Don't think about other men in my bed. He sealed her lips with a kiss. He knew he had to hold her tighter in the future. He didn't want to risk losing her even by accident. Serena pushed the man away. Leo, don't mess around. I'll send a message. Don't reply. Leo tossed her phone onto the bedside table. Serena's resistance to him dwindled. She became more and more addicted to him. Meanwhile, in room 707, Mark and Haley went back and forth for a long time. Finally, the effects of the medicine on Mark's body wore out, and he was content and delighted. He opened his eyes and gazed at the woman in his arms. It wasn't Serena, but Haley. For the past few hours, his thoughts had been solely focused on Serena. Seeing Haley there, he was dumbstruck. He felt disappointment, relief, and gratitude all at the same time. He was relieved that it wasn't Serena. If something had happened between them, then he would have let Haley down. However, where did this inexplicable feeling of disappointment come from? Could it be that he had feelings for Serena? Marky, are you feeling better now? Haley purred. Sorry, I was too rough earlier. I think I wasn't myself. I feel it was my mom who probably drugged me. Mark felt guilty towards Haley. In the future, he needed to distance himself from Serena. Even if he harbored any anger towards Haley now, he had to let go of it promptly. Haley shook her head. You don't have to be sorry, Marky. It's been a long time since you made love to me like this. You have no idea how happy I am. Serena woke up before dawn and remembered that it was Monday. She couldn't forget the last time she was late and got punished badly. If she was late again, she might lose her job. Leo, still in bed, tried to persuade her to sleep longer. It's so early. Why don't you sleep a little longer? Leo saw that it was not dawn yet and pulled her into his arms again. Serena refused. Leo, I have work today and we can't be late. Let's get up now, okay? Why don't you drop into my office? The timings could be flexible for you, Leo said. No, Serena replied firmly. She wanted to build her own success through hard work and determination without relying on a man. If she went to work at Leo's company, people might assume that she was only there because of their relationship. Moreover, this situation between them was already complicated enough. It felt like invisible strings were tying them together, pulling them closer and closer, and she didn't want to make things even more confusing. Leo opened his steely blue eyes and stared at her. Do you know how many people are fighting for a place in my company? He queried. Serena wasn't aware of the type of company that Leo owned when he suggested she work there. She replied honestly, I'm not looking to change my job right now. I'll just freshen up first. Leo knew that he shouldn't push her too hard, as he understood that for someone like her, self-esteem is important. Pushing too hard, on the other hand, could backfire. After dropping Serena off at the office entrance, Leo watched as she hurriedly got out of the car. She said, I have some things to take care of, Leo. Thanks for the ride. You're not having breakfast? Leo asked. It's too late for that now. See you later, Serena replied before quickly running off. Leo's gaze lingered on Serena as she disappeared from view, a soft smile spreading across his lips.